Hey y'all, welcome to today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. All right, you guys, I am gonna talk to you all about hummingbirds today, all right? I became a crazy hummingbird lady last season. Last year was the first year that I kept hummingbird feeders here at my house and I learned how to make the nectar and how to, you know, care for them and clean them and just some little tips and tricks that I wanna share with y'all because it's hummingbird season right now where I live in South Carolina. I have not seen one yet, but I just made some nectar last night and I put the two feeders up. I have one in the front of my house and then I have one in the back side of my house. So we're just gonna wait and see and hopefully they come. I know they'll come because they came here last year and I had a ton of hummingbirds, you guys. I ended up putting out probably six to eight feeders that I had going at all times. What happens is the hummingbirds get very territorial about a feeder I didn't realize this and they'll just like dive bomb the other one and they'll kind of fight with each other and they want to have one feeder that's their own and of course they all do they do share and they all eat out of the different ones but you'll notice like one bird in particular will be guarding the specific feeder so I would recommend having multiple feeders even if it's just two that gives them a little bit of choice and kind of spread them out so I ended up having I think it was like three on the front side of my house I hung one right here by this light fixture I hung it off of here and when I bring all of my plants out here one hummingbird was so dang cute he would sit on the leaf of my giant philodendron that I bring out here when the weather's right which it's about to be right and it was the cutest thing it doesn't even weigh down the leaf at all him sitting there and then I had out back I had about three and I have another area of like right by my laundry room window that I'm wanting to put a little hook and hang another feeder so I have quite a few feeders going at one time it's so so super easy to make the hummingbird nectar I'm telling you guys and I get so much joy from seeing the birds and it's it's just such a cool experience you'll be out here and it's just constantly zoom 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 you can just hear them like their wings just flapping by and dallas loves it i absolutely am obsessed with it okay and i put all the feeders right in front of the windows so then when i am inside i can see them but i'll show you guys how i make the nectar i made the nectar last night and it's super super simple so let's go to making the nectar and then i'll tell you some more tips all right, you guys, I'm going to show you how I make my hummingbird nectar. Now, what I do is I usually do it on the stovetop. I'm sure you could microwave the water or, you know, heat up the kitchen sink water, but I just prefer to do it this way to make sure to get all the sugar mixed in, that it's completely incorporated and all the sugar is completely melted in the water. Sometimes I make different amounts, okay, but what it has to be is pure granulated sugar, okay? That's what's got to be. Can't be anything else. It has to be that. So what I do is I'm going to make four cups of water with one cup of sugar. So if you know you just break that down, it's a one to four ratio. Four cups of water with one cup of sugar. So what I do is I put two cups in here. It's nice and warm. It's getting ready to simmer. I'm gonna add in my cup of sugar. And then once it's all incorporated, I'm gonna mix it in with this cold right here. And then I'm gonna put it in the fridge until I'm ready to fill up my bird feeders. I don't want it warm or hot. You know, you can keep leftovers in the fridge. If you fill up your feeder, you can keep the leftover water in the fridge. I don't know where my measuring cup is. My kid, I think, ran off with it or something. All right. So, that's one cup of sugar. We're just going to go ahead and mix this in. You don't want it too hot. And then I'm just going to stir, 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 stir until this water turns clear. And I'm not boiling it. I'm just, you know, simmering it. So until this water gets clear and then I'm going to mix it in the cold and that's it. Okay. It doesn't need any dyes. You guys don't need to add any kind of dyes. There, that does nothing. I don't know why there's dyes in the ones you buy from, you know, Lowe's or Home Depot. And it's so much cheaper and so much easier. And if you guys have a lot of hummingbirds like me, trust me, 
you want to make your own nectar so as you can see that's all it takes it's literally clear so one to four and if you can drink your water the hummingbirds can drink it you know if you're not feeling safe drinking your water then make sure to boil the water before you give it to the hummingbirds but that's all it is and then we're gonna pour this in So I fill mine upside down. Okay, so I always carry them out upside down until I hang them on the tree. And then I bring a little cup of water for my ant moat. And we're going to hang one in the back and one in the front. Until I see hummingbirds come, then I'll hang more. Now we're going around front to put the other one in now the hummingbirds will have something to drink if they're here in the morning thank you son you're so super helpful okay we're gonna fill both the ant moats all right now that you know how to make the hummingbird nectar super super simple okay you guys just can't give them anything except the granulated sugar no honey no brown sugar no other type of sweeteners it has to be the granulated white sugar okay table sugar um and yeah so super easy one to four and you can do it with just hot water from your sink i just prefer to do it on the stove top because i think it mixes really well and I, you want to make sure there's no granules in there you want to make sure it's mixed up really really good um but i do keep my extra hummingbird feed in the refrigerator for probably i don't know three or four days what i end up doing is i don't fill my feeders up super full i probably fill them up just like a quarter of the way or half it depends on how much the hummingbirds are actually you know drinking but that way i can just take a feeder down super simple go clean it in the sink and then fill it back up with the stuff from the fridge it's already made so i like to make a big batch and then over a couple of days i'll you know change it out it is really super important that you guys change your hummingbird um feed i don't know if i'm calling it nectar feed whatever it is super super important that you guys change your hummingbird feeders very frequently especially if it's super hot because they get back dirt and bacteria and stuff gets in the water and it can cause mold like what happened was i noticed i had one feeder that was out back that was hanging on a specific tree that really didn't have much shade i really try now to keep all the feeders in a shaded spot if i can um, that's why I press them right up against the house because if the sun is just beating right on it, it's going to end up going bad quicker, okay, with the sun there, you know? It's just, it gets funky. The water will get funky and you could really kill a hummingbird if you let your water get funky and they drink it. So it's really important to keep your feeders clean and change frequently. So I would suggest, like I said, making a big batch and only filling them up a little bit and then taking them in, rinsing them out with hot water and then refilling them. I think that's honestly the easiest and the best way to go about doing it. Another tip that I use is a baby bottle cleaner. It's like all these different little size brushes and it's got this perfect little skinny brush and I can get all down in the crevices. So that is helpful and if they get really grimy, I will just use white vinegar, like put a little bit of vinegar in the water and soak them down in the sink and that seems to help really get them clean. I don't use any other kind of cleaner or chemical or anything because i don't want there to be any kind of residue and could hurt the hummingbirds so another thing that i invested in it wasn't very expensive i think 10 to 12 dollars off of amazon were ant moats because if you guys are like me we're in the sand hills literally we live on a giant ant hill we have ant hills that are like the size of me out here i'm not kidding so we have ant problems major major ant problems and what will happen is the ants will crawl up the little shepherd's hook they'll find the sugar water and they'll be covering they'll be inside the feeder it's a complete mess so 
two of my favorite feeders that I have have ant moats kind of built into the top so I do always just fill that up with water and I have seen the birds drink just the regular water out of the top of that so that gives them a water source something else that I really really want to work on this year is creating a fountain for them because what happens is it's so much pollen and dust and everything that they stir up and get on their wings and it can weigh them down a lot and it's really not good for them. It's so crucial for hummingbirds to eat. I think it's like every 20 minutes they have to have something to eat, whether that be from you know a flower or your feeder, um, that they could end up dying. Like it's crazy to me if you look into the stuff about hummingbirds. So another thing is all that dirt and stuff that weighs them down is really not good for them. They like to be clean. They want to be clean. And if you give them a water source that they can clean themselves off on, it really does help. So from what I can tell, um, they like a bubbler, if that makes sense. So any kind of fountain or things that just kind of bubble over where they can sit on it and, you know, wash their body and stuff. So I have a huge giant pot that's going to be a future uh, project. I want to make a fountain out of and keep over here under my porch and hopefully give them an area for to clean their little selves off and be able to fly better so so all of this footage that I have that I'm gonna be showing you guys is from last season I was trying to make a video about hummingbirds last season it was the season was coming to an end and every day I got so sad I was like oh, I haven't seen any like every day it would be less and less and less and less I still kept a feeder out for a while um, I've heard that you can keep a feeder out I would say two weeks past when you see the last bird so just because I physically see the last bird doesn't mean that there's not any birds coming and feeding they're getting ready to go on a very long journey to migrate so I kept the feeder out for a while but I was so sad you guys when the hummingbirds went I did not know that I would become this obsessed and this crazy of a hummingbird lady some of the footage the really cute footage that i got of him like cleaning them sitting and he's cleaning on himself and his little tongue sticking out is actually through my window from my plant room um but yeah all of this footage was from last season towards the end of the year but i'm hoping to be able to get a lot more footage and do another video soon for you guys when they come I'm gonna have to let you know when they come because I'm eager like if I see one all I need to do is see one hummingbird then I know all of them will come it's like they once one comes then the rest of them will come so I've only put out two feeders one in the front of the house and one in the back of the house so I hope you guys put out some feeders because they really do need our help any kind of extra especially now like with pesticides and people don't plan as much I know I'm not as good about outside gardening I want to be more so this year I have a bunch of flower seeds that I've planted so if you guys just look into what your native plants are that attract hummingbirds and plant some of those I guarantee you it'll bring them in and they're just so majestic I don't know you guys there's something about hummingbirds that is so majestic and just like I'm, I'm obsessed with it and I've seen different kinds as well it, it's not like they're all just the same I even saw like a I think it's called a ruby redneck or red throated I saw one of those that one the little red one he claimed this feeder out here is his so I'm just so curious to see what kind of hummingbirds are gonna be here what their little personalities are like because they do they're really funny they have like little personalities and I just I don't know I can't wait so I hope this video encourages you guys to get some hummingbird feeders yourself because I'm telling you what it's so easy it's so easy and it's so it brings you so much joy I got my mom to get a feeder uh, we were it was out of season so she has a feeder and she's gonna watch this and I'm gonna tell her how to do the water and stuff and I picked a little spot I'm like if you put it right here they should come okay they should come because they they're coming in from a long trip so I hope I'm here to welcome them and they stay because you guys they stayed and they stayed here like I could not believe and I don't know if it's just because I'm out in the country and I'm not sure why I had so many but I had a ton like at any moment there could be three or four at a feeder or there would be one at this one one at this one I would go to the back you would see see them swooping in like it's just I don't know I'm a crazy bird lady also I've heard that 
they don't really get along with birds but I haven't found that to be the case. I keep bird feeders with seed right here as well. And I have a double shepherd's hook by this one window and I had a hummingbird feeder and then the regular bird feeder like this. And there were times that they're both on the feeders at the same time. So, you know, I don't think that they like didn't get along, but I didn't have any problems with it. I saw more problems with them fighting with each other over the feeders than anything and yeah it's so crazy because they'll just dive bomb something else i wanted to mention is do you see how close this shepherd's hook is to the house now that i've been learning a little bit more about hummingbirds and stuff i didn't realize that it basically the internet says you shouldn't have your hummingbird feeder right up next to the house as you can obviously see this is right next to my house this hummingbird feeder right here is hanging off of a light fixture my front porch light um i didn't know that it suggests not to have them right up next to the house because they could run into a window and they can't maneuver as good so i'm probably going to reposition this year some of my feeders and try to move them away a little bit but i had so many feeders going i just like kind of hooked them in any kind of spot that i could and i prefer the shade so it's like the water seems to be fresher and last longer if it's in a shaded area like this underneath my porch or closer up to the window and then also i have a bush that's right on the side of my house in front of my plant room and this bush is a tuberous flower it's called turk's cap i believe and i always have to google image it to, to remember the name and we just always called it the hummingbird bush because that bush attracts hummingbirds so my very first feeder that i put out was right there okay right by that bush and it's kind of pulled away from the house a little bit but that one does get sun sometimes so you know it's hard it's like a top you got to find a good spot for them okay it really does make a difference and this is the feeder that i have out in the middle of the yard and i guess i don't know if more come to this feeder or not i don't i really don't think so in comparison to the ones that are pushed right up next to the house but that feeder that's right out there it just the sun hits it and it goes that's the first feeder i'm always changing like that water seems to get changed quicker than the other ones because the sun beating on it the water ends up going bad um but yeah so keep that in mind if you guys are putting out feeders this year like think about the spot to where they can maneuver good but it doesn't get a ton of sunlight also if you just make sure to add pure cane sugar to your shopping list if you guys are like me i can't remember anything i always have to have a shopping list um because if you start picking it up just like a little bit here and there or as you go you'll have a stockpile of sugar and you won't even have to worry about running out or getting sugar like i don't eat sugar so <laughs> we don't have sugar just for like coffee or anything like that you know so i always have to remember to buy it and i haven't been good about that lately so make sure to add pure cane sugar to your shopping list so you guys can make the nectar so that's going to do it for today's hummingbird video i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope i taught you how to make the nectar gave you some tips uh yeah change it frequently and just put them in a shady spot they'll come okay they will and you guys you're gonna love it i promise so thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you guys again soon in another planty video don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below if you enjoy my content and make sure to turn on the notification bell because i'm very random with my uploads but i'll be seeing you guys again soon in another planty video bye